I refuse to give any of my inheritance to my affair baby sister to save her life. Am I the a-hole? I mean, is she going to die? You know, hey, she's an affair baby sister. <laughs> I always like when we have these uh, these multiple relationships and like like family and friendship dynamics. I'm like, what what is actually going on here? Yeah. I guess we'll find out. Yeah, we we are about to. So when I was 25, we found out that my father had been cheating on my mother for years, and he had a seven year old daughter with his mistress. Wow, we're coming out of this story swinging. Yeah, we are uh, start starting off with a with a bang over here in one split second. The happy family I knew was completely gone, and I went through one of the darkest times in my life. Yikes. Whew. Rough. My parents divorced, and per their prenup, my mother walked away with most of their assets since she also contributed more to the family income, and she never forgave my dad for what he did and never talked to him again, though she grudgingly allowed me to have whatever relationship I wanted to have with him. I eventually forgave my dad, mostly just because I was tired of carrying so much anger and so much hurt in my heart. I talked to him, but I want nothing to do with his mistress or my half-sister, the affair baby. The affair baby. Yeah. Like, why you got to be so mean to the affair baby? The affair baby didn't do anything. I, th I understand maybe being mad at the mistress, but the affair baby, come on. Ca caught in the cross. Hey, you're catching shrapnel. I'm sorry. I'm, 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 I'm shooting. I'm shooting and you're, you're catching shrapnel. You're against it's, the fair, affair baby? It just <laughs> John hates affair babies. John it likes to shoot shrapnel <laughs> into affair babies. You heard it here first, folks. In 20 years, there's going to be like the whatever Twitter is in the future. And it's going to be like, John Fry likes shooting babies. <laughs> <laughs> Do Cancel you him want now. him to be your next governor? <laughs> yeah. Say no to John Fry. That's right. Baby shooter. <laughs> the baby shooter. Um, my mother passed away last year and left me everything. Oh, wow. She got all of her inheritance, her money, her real estate assets, her business, which I now own and operate. Whoa. Like we're talking everything, everything. assets, assets yeah. over here. And like the mom was the richer of the two. So she, okay. Her mom wow. had fat assets, fat, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. big old jiggly assets, <laughs> <laughs> but doink a doink. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm in a relatively comfortable financial position while my dad is getting by. Yikes. Daddy's poor. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but at least he's got his mistress, though. He's young hey, at hey. heart. He's got his mistress and he's got his affair, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's good to go. He's young at heart and in the wiener. <laughs> got that young dick. Uh, that young cock. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, he was never a good businessman on his own and has lost a lot of money on businesses that just later went belly up. Yikes. This year, my half-sister was diagnosed with a life-threatening illness, and she has been in the hospital for the last four months. The bills are mounting, and my dad came to me for help because they are now in a situation where they are finding it difficult to come up with the money for my sister's treatment. Oh, jeez. So basically, like, if she doesn't get treated, then she dies. It, that's what it's at. This is a really, 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 wow. really, really tough situation. The thing is, I don't want to use my mother's money to pay for the treatment of the child her husband had with this other woman. Even though it's not my half sister's fault, I like how she keeps saying like half sister. Half sister, just like, yeah, just know. sticking it in. Um, it feels so unfair when I think that the money worked so hard for all her life will go to a child that neither my mother and I have any responsibility towards and the very same child of the man and the woman who hurt her so, so much. I'd really rather use it to grow her company and let my dad and my half sister's mother figure out how to get money for the treatment. They are her parents after all. And the only thing tying her to me is my father saying, she is your sister. And if she dies because she doesn't get the treatment she needs, would you be able to sleep at night? So the question That's is... some emotional manipulation right there. Massive emotional manipulation. Yikes. So the question is, am I the a-hole? Oh God! This is this that is, is one of the one of the hardest because it's so cut yeah, it's and dry. like the trolley problem. It's like you know, right? Like if you don't pull the switch, are you still are you murdering someone even though you, 
you know, like, well, like, except this no, no one's the trolley one is like you, like, what does it kill? Like one unhealthy person or yeah. three healthy people or whatever that is. Uh, this, but it's like, there's also the other trolley problem. If it's like, if, if you like, or yeah, so well, but yeah, there's that way. Well, if you kill right. like one or 10 people, but it's like, if you move it, are you still, are you res- now responsible right. for killing the one person? Right. Right. Whereas if you just let it go, you're killing 10 people, but. But you're also, I guess you're also responsible because you have the power to, but basically like OP has the power to save a life and it's like, do you do it? And are you morally responsible? But on a, also on a darker note, like everyone kind of has the power to save a life like every day. Like if you donate to like one of those malaria foundations, right. like yeah, you could literally, you could literally save, save a life, a life. Yeah. today, today, right uh, now. It sounds like we're doing an Yeah, ad it literally for, sounds like we're doing the infomercial <laughs> where it's like five cents can save this child, <laughs> give water for a year for this child. Literally. Um, um, dude, so, this, yeah, I, it's, it, this is, I think one of the toughest, like moral quandaries yeah. we've had on the show. Like it's, it's either way is kind of, super fucked because honestly she is i get the situation and i'm not saying that she's totally responsible for her but that is her half sister so it's yeah. not like the only thing tying it to her is the dad's like words it she is related to her yeah which doesn't necessarily mean anything but it doesn't mean nothing yeah yeah it, it there there's definitely ties yeah and i think like as fucked up as you know like the dad's question is like are you going to be able to live for yourself like i think that's a valid question it kind of right? yeah like it's like don't do it for anyone else right do it like will you act if you don't do this will you regret it will you be able to live with yourself yeah and if you're like fuck if i care i don't really care then maybe maybe that's that 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 tells you something but if you actually look at it and are like man maybe i will regret this then then you probably should should help i would yeah like i feel like op knows what she wants to do but like i would just be lost and it's also like you you're, you're kind of going against your mother's memory too you know in in what way oh oh by do by doing it by by giving yes. by give, like if you were to give all this money away right you're you're to the affair baby yeah but i you know i think there's i i actually do think there is a middle ground here like i think i think the um, mm. what what op could do is she, like like i feel like op is framing it like she to help her dad and this affair baby, she has to give away the entire fortune. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. I, I can't imagine that's true, but even if it is, let's say it is. Yeah. Yeah. I think the, the middle ground is like, like here, let, let me, let me give you like 25, like 50 K um, to keep going. But she doesn't have to sell the business to yeah, to or, like, or sell the, ha- the real estate or anything. Yeah. Like, yeah. Maybe she could, she, what she probably should do is like, look, in order to get this amount, you need to like, you know, start a GoFundMe, like get like figure out, figure out the the absolute most the both of you can do with this. I'm going to give you this amount once you get all that, like the gears running and and then I'm out like yeah. this. This is not my responsibility or problem. So, but yeah, but I do want to like, I do want to help in some way. So yeah, I don't want to just leave her defenseless. So, but damn complicated situation yep. for sure. Why wasn't I at my desk? Well, maybe it was because you said you'd slap the shit out of me. You know, if uh, if someone said that, I probably wouldn't be at the place where they are. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna about to be Will Smithed by someone. Mm-mm-mm. I'm not standing there watching this big dude come over me to smack me in the face. I'm gonna defend myself. That's right. By running away. <laughs> About 15 years ago, I worked for a large hospital for kids in the maintenance department. Our manager, let's call her Karen, was a major bitch. Yeah, that's No one right. on our team. Yeah, that's right. That's you right. Know, hey, do we know any Karens that she's ain't just, major bees? All she's doing is taking care of sick children, children all day. Like, what a, what a bitch. <laughs> what like, a terrible person. Awful. Let the kids die. <laughs> no one on our team liked her, and we outwardly showed no respect for her after her constant what? harassment towards us in the two years she worked here. Bro. I love it's like, like I, I, I imagine like Karen like got off on the wrong foot like initially, yeah, and then yeah. everyone just dumped just on her. her. Like and I'm now, like now it's like, oh, Karen's such a bitch. But literally, they're like dunking on her every single day, throwing pies in her face, like putting yeah. thumbtacks on her <laughs> chair. Karen's so terrible. And it's like, uh, you sound kind of terrible. You guys guys have been pranking me for way too long. She would call us on the maintenance radios and be rude to tell the guys they were being incompetent. It was beyond micromanagement, but also rude on top of it. She expected the maintenance guys to come do work at her house for free. 
or would tell some of the hospital vendors she would guarantee the hospital contract if they did work at her house for cheap. Okay, she does suck. That sucks. <laughs> oh my suck. god, she that's like suck. uh like blackmail almost. Literally. Wow. She used to brag about this to me. Karen and I were the only woman in our department of about 25 people. So I, I was a mouthy 20 something year old and didn't care for her attitude and regularly would say, yeah, sure. Whatever. When she asked me to do things, I would do what she asked because it was my job, but I would make a non-committal remark like that. One time she asked me to come to her house and help her pull down dead trees in her backyard. since she was having a pool installed lady. This is not the job. What? I do not work for you. I work for the hospital. I am not like your your personal tree dragger. <laughs> what are you talking about? I said no, mainly because I wouldn't do it for someone I liked, let alone her. And pretty soon after that, she started treating me even worse than she did before. I mean, you did. You threw it back hard. Yeah. So like, is it worth? Like to me, that's like not not worth it. I don't want to no, make my life hell for like one like got one, yeah, one line, zinger. You know. Yeah. She had been trying to get me in trouble since then, such as ceasing her buddy in HR and emails to me asking for status on project that I was working on and wanted my replies in writing. Okay, yeah, so Karen's really trying to yeah, do get her. the most. Fast forward six months later, me and one of the maintenance guys were chatting in the office, and I was five months pregnant with my first baby. Congrats, yeah. OP. Yeah. She asked me to do something. I don't remember what. And I said, yeah, whatever. I'll do it in a few minutes. And I turned back around to talk to my coworker. She is standing behind me, and I hear her whisper, I wish I could slap the shit out of you. What? Karen's getting feisty. Bro. Karen's about to throw hands. Yo, that's an HR violation if oh. I ever heard of one. Oh, yeah. But also, OP's being kind of like, being kind of a dick. She's stoking the flames, but yeah. like, you go up to a pregnant, well, I mean, I, she's pregnant. another woman, going to a pregnant woman, you're like, I wish I could slap the shit out you. No. Yeah, that's fucked no. up. That's fucked up. I can see my coworker saw her say it too, and I made no comment, but I was shocked. I acted like I didn't hear her though. She left the office a minute later to do something. I get up, walk down the hall to the employee health department because I am fuming and my heart was racing. I'm pissed, and I'm also five months pregnant, so I'm extra pissed. Yeah. Uh, the employee health nurse has me lay down for a bit, take my vitals, and write up a formal report. And an hour later, she sends me back to my desk as I'm okay to continue working. So basically, she just did this to get a complaint filed against Karen. Smart. Mm. When I log back in, I see an email from Karen with HRCC asking where I had been for the last hour as she had called the office phone a bunch of times and was wondering why I had abandoned my desk. So I emailed her back. I, have, I, I love that this is like... I, I read ahead a little bit. This is like corporate, like clapbacks, you know? Mm. I love this. I apologize for being away from my desk. When you said you'd like to slap the shit out of me, I was upset. I had to be calmed down and have mine and my baby's vitals checked at the employee health center. And they were concerned about my hostile working environment and wanted me to stay there the full hour. And you can bet your ass that I BCC'd her buddy in HR and all of hr her boss and his boss to make sure everyone saw it bro those cc's dude those cc's Clear getting cut. saucy <laughs> i was summoned to hr about 30 minutes later i knew karen hadn't seen my reply yet this was early 2000s and her computer was down in the office near me they had me go home for a day and put me on admin leave for three extra days i came back to the office to see her desk had been emptied and we never saw her again those guys in maintenance threw me the best baby shower ever three months later. Dude. Yo, that's yeah. revenge, dude. dude that, that is a dish serve. Well played. Well played. Crushed it. Also, I love like corporate clapbacks in the email chains. Like as per my last email, yeah. you freaking dumbass. As per my last email, you can see that I fucking hate you. <laughs> Get over it. <laughs> I love I love like the the corporate lingo translations. Yeah. It's like as per my last email is like, did you not see did this you not you fucking see this idiot? Shit, you idiot. Uh or like uh uh what's another Let one? Let me know your one? earliest convenience is get this shit done right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh dude, it's so weird. Cor corporate America. I ain't about it. 
talking about it. Fuck corporate America. Yeah.